Hey Abumia, looking sad? Why are you sitting alone today? Where is your darling Kalua? Govinda was worried. Perhaps I have lost her. I have seen her footprints going up the hill. That devil must have killed her. Poor Abu Khan was almost in tears. He could not understand why Kalua broke the string and disappeared in the night. He used to give her green juicy grass and tasty grains. But even then, his only family member had left his house. After some days, Abu Mia bought another goat. This new one was pretty, white as snow, had two little horns and a pair of lovely bright red eyes. I will call you Chandni. Caressing her soft fur, he said. One fine morning, his neighbor Govinda appeared. He saw Abu Mia talking to his only family member. Hey Abu Chacha, you look happy and healthy. How's life now? I am the happiest person, Govinda. Chani has brought new life to me. She loves me a lot. And even I can't live without her. Abu Chacha was beaming with joy. But what were you telling her? I saw you talking with your darling. Oh yes, I was telling her the story of Kalua's sad end at the bloodthirsty teeth of that devil on the hill. Abu Mia replied, But my dear Channi will never leave me. She is so understanding and happy with me. He added, Govinda said, Abu Chacha, I am delighted to see you like this. I am sure Channi will accompany you till your last breath. Some years passed. Channi developed an attraction for the hill. Every morning she watched the hilltops shining in the tender sunlight. How beautiful these hills are, she thought. And how refreshing is the breeze that blows through them. I must run across those green fields. She ran towards the hills but stopped with a jerk. There was a rope around her neck. She hated it the most. Gradually, Chani stopped eating the green grass and tasty grains. Even she lost interest in Abu Khan's stories. She lost her appetite, grew very thin. She stared moodlessly at the hills, bathing in the sunlight or playing with the clouds. Abu Khan could sense what was happening to his dear Chani. He pushed her into a small hut and shut the door, but forgot to close the small window at the back. The same night, Chani made the window her passage for freedom. When Chani reached the hilltop, the big yellow sun was rising in the horizon. She was overflowing with joy and wonder. The green grass under her feet became golden yellow. The wind sang an endless song of welcome. Chani felt as if she were meeting her mother after years of separation. How different all this was from Abu Khan's prison house. That day, she jumped and played and ate all around. She was on the top of the world. It was the happiest day in Chani's life. The sun disappeared behind the hills. Soon the darkness covered the grass, the flowers and the trees. The wind stopped blowing. There was stillness all around. An owl hooted from a hole. Chani felt scared. The full moon rose in the distant sky. In its silver light, Chani saw two bright eyes and sharp teeth moving slowly towards her. The devil was not in a hurry. He knew that this goat was also his food. The wolf and the goat struck their heads with each other. He was big and ferocious, whereas she was small but not weak. Chani stood firm on her legs head slightly bent and her strong horns aimed at the devil. She looked like a brave soldier, ready to fight a cruel enemy. The fight began. It went on through the night. The moon began to grow pale and suddenly hid behind the clouds. The stars also began to disappear one by one. A faint light appeared in the east. The first rays of the sun 
saw Channi lying on the ground. She was completely soaked in blood. The wolf, tired and sleepy, was getting ready to devour her. A flock of birds sitting on a tree was debating the result of the fight. So who is the winner? asked a small one. The wolf, of course. Most of the others declared together. No, said a wise old bird. Channi is the winner. I have never seen such a brave freedom fighter.